Hello guys, this is Coach B with MasterChess.com. Throughout the years, I had many students and friends ask me what they need to do to move on to and improve their rating. They seem to get stuck at a level because they keep winning and losing games in that section without any consistency. They can't seem to figure out what they need to work on to be able to win more consistent and reach a higher rating group. This is very common, especially at the expert level, moving on to masters. I've been a high school chess coach and math teacher for the last 11 years. Throughout this time, I've researched a lot of material to see what chess content will help my students improve the most and the fastest. I teach in a high school where more than 60% of the students have a free lunch, and almost all the students that I had, with the exception of three, have never had any chess experience other than just knowing how the pieces move and just playing for fun with friends and family. Therefore, I had to be very selective with the information that I taught the students in the time that I had so they can improve the fastest. I needed to get them ready by the end of the year to be able to compete with the top teams in the state, some of which had masters and experts among them. This year I had a great success story when my board one, who is a senior and only 1300 rated, went undefeated at state on board one. He drew a master and an expert and won against other five strong players. In the following slides I will share with you the findings of my research for the last decade that I strongly believe will help you improve your games the fastest. There are many great resources online like chess.com, leechess.org, chesstempo.com and other websites but I felt that the information available is just overwhelming and it doesn't present the information step by step that you should follow to improve your skills the fastest. In my research, I've read dozens of books by great authors like Jeremy Silman, Mark Dvoretskis, Jesus de Villa, Nikolai Menev and others. I've looked at many websites and information presented. I've used over 4 million games in my database that I ran statistics on and I've used my experience as a coach and the hundreds of games that I went over to be able to put the scores together step by step. The elements that I took in consideration are the frequency of the positions, how often do these positions arise in chess games, the difficulty of the material, and the prerequisites that are needed to be known before understanding a topic. And before we get started, I want to mention that as a teacher, I truly believe that any content that you want to master, including chess, has to be taught, has to be practiced, has to be tested, and has to be reviewed. As I haven't seen all of these components present in any websites as an easy to follow step-by-step -step process, I've decided to start a website that will have all of these components. This is a work in progress for many years to come and I am slowly going to make the lessons on the content that will be presented in the following slides. So let's get started. First of all, what should you work on first after you know how the pieces move? Well, you need to know how to checkmate with the king and rook versus a king, and king and queen versus a king. These positions happen very often and usually when you are in time trouble, that I recommend practicing them against a friend or a computer with two minutes left on your clock and a five second delay. Then you need to know a few tips about winning with the queen versus a minor, and the five basic draws in chess, which include king and a bishop versus king, king and a knight versus king, king and two knights versus king, king and rook pawn versus king, and king and rook pawn plus bad bishop versus king. Learning this material should get you from 100 rating to 300 rating. Moving from 300 to 800 rating, you will need to learn some tactics. These include forks, pins, skewers, removing the defender, discovery attack, deflection, and checkmate combinations in two or three moves. After learning what these strategies are, you will want to start a workout every day of about 10 puzzles a day. You can find these tactics for free on chesstempo.com, leechess.org, or if you have some money that you want to invest, you can use chess.com or chesskit.com and other websites where a membership are required. Most of these websites are mobile friendly or they have apps for mobile phones and it will be very easy to practice these type of tactics. Going from 800 to 1200 in rating, you want to spend some time on studying some strategies. These will include opening principles, what do you need to do in the beginning of the game, pawn structure, weak squares, 
the difference between an open and closed game, which pieces to trade and which pieces to keep for the end game. And also I would recommend learning a basic opening, just 6 to 8 moves into the opening, not an entire repertoire yet. You just want to know where to position your pieces and to make sure that you're castled so you could start the game well. The openings that I would recommend at this level for white, and they can be found on my website, are the basic Squins Gambit opening for white and the basic Karakhan for black. Or another easy opening to study for white is the English and also for black the Sicilian Dragon which is just like the English but for black. Later on we're going to talk about developing an opening repertoire but for now we just need to know a couple of moves into the game just so we can start the game well. Moving from a 1200 to a 1600 rating you will need to focus on the end game. Most of the games will end in the end game especially if you play in your rating group. Therefore you have to know some key end games that occur very often and you need to know them well even when you are in time trouble. At this level, you need to know the following pawn endgames. The opposition, the deep freeze and the fox and the chicken position, the square of the pawn and all flanking. Then you need to know some key positions playing with a piece versus a pawn. You need to study how to play when you have a queen versus a pawn on the 6th or 7th rank with the king next to the pawn. Then study how to play with a bishop versus a pawn, a knight versus a pawn and a rook versus a pawn. Also you need to know the most common rook endgames. Research says that rook endgames are the most frequent and they have to be known very well as well. For rook endgames at this level we need to know the Lucena position, the Philidor position, cutting off the king to reach an advantage, how to use a pass pawn with the rook behind it to transpose into a winning pawn endgame and some key positions with the rook and pawn versus rook with a pawn on the 6th and 7th rank. Advancing from 1600 to 1800 in rating, you will have to work on all three parts of the games. The end game, the middle game and the openings. You will need to learn the following pawn end games. The mind squares, the positions involving two connected pawns versus one pawn, excluding the rook and knight versus rook pawn, which is a more challenging topic and will be discussed later. Self-protecting pawns, the outside pass pawn, the protected pass pawn. For rook endgames, you will need to learn how to play with rook and two connected pawns versus rook, the importance of taking control of the 7th rank, the Klingon Horowitz defense, also called Philidor gone bad in some books, the Vancouver position, and the 4th rank defense. After that, at this level, you will need to develop an opening repertoire. For this, first of all, it's important to know what type of player are you. Are you an attacking player that likes to take risks and play different combinations and sacrifices to checkmate? Are you a player that does not like to take risks? You rather play careful not to lose any material. Do you like open or closed games? Do you prefer positional play or do you prefer tactical gameplay with opportunities for combinations? I will talk more about this topic when I will make a lesson on how to build your own opening repertoire. Then we will also need to learn about the middle game. We will need to learn about imbalances, peace activity, trading, how to use a superior miner, identifying key files, pawn structures, weak squares, past pawns, backward pawns, doubled pawns, isolated pawns, how to create weaknesses, how to use the minority attack or a pawn majority, how to use space advantage, identifying static and dynamic weaknesses, and for the rook how to create an open file, still an open file, and control the 7th rank. Moving from 1800 to 2000 rating, you need to study and practice the following pawn endgames. Shouldering, the floating square, the breakthrough, undermining, and self stalemates. Also at this level, you need to study the following games with minors, opposite color bishops, two bishops versus king, bishop and two pawns versus bishop, same color bishops, and rook versus bishop or knight. For rook endgames at this level I recommend studying the defense with the king attacking the pawn from the rear, this distant checks defense with the king on the short side and on the long side, and some important tactical elements. Going from 2000 to 2200 I recommend to learn the last of the pawn endgames which includes pawn races and counting, 
king races including dual purpose moves, zigzag and pendulum, triangulation, reserve tempi, principle of two weaknesses, blocked rook pawns with an extra pawn, and connected knight and rook pawn versus rook, the bird's collar principle. For endgames with minors, you should study rook versus rook and bishop, bishop versus knight with the pass pawn, and checkmate with bishop and knight. Also at this level, you should study rook plus two pawns versus rook, rook and pawns versus rook and an extra pawn, queen versus rook and pawn, queen and pawn versus rook and two pawns, and queen endgames. And in the end, what should you do to go beyond master level? Well, you should study how to checkmate with king and queen versus rook, and you should study the third rank defense when you have the rook versus a queen to really test the other player if he knows the winning pattern with the queen. Also at this level, you need to start a work plan for reviewing previous learned information. There was a lot of things that you had to learn to reach this level, and it is very likely that you will start to forget quite a few things. You should continue to work on tactics every day, especially before a tournament. You should keep all your games in a database and go over them with the grandmaster or coach to find common problems in your games. You should read chess history and watch videos explained by grandmasters to see how they are thinking. Memorize grandmaster games, especially those that follow your opening repertoire. Study some unorthodox openings and the ideas behind them so that you could catch high-graded grandmasters by surprise. Hopefully this information helps and in the coming future I will start making the lessons that follow all of this information in order. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my website masterychess.com where you will be able to practice the lesson you will learn. Thank you and have a great day.